All right, the next problem we're hoping you're trying on your own a little bit first with Desmos and then can actually come back and check your answers here and see how you're doing. Um, but you notice there's going to be some similarities to what we had talked about in the last problem. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right. So a 450 gallon tank of full water is draining at a rate of 20 gallons per minute. How many gallons will be in the tank after seven minutes? All right, so we're starting with 450 gallons, and this time it's draining at a rate of 20 gallons per minute. If you're draining, that means it's going away. It's getting smaller. 450 is draining out. So 20 gallons per minute, and then how much is in the tank after seven minutes? 450 minus 20 times seven, then, will give us our amount that is left. So let's plug that in. 450 minus 20 times 7, and that's going to be equal to 310 gallons. All right, how long will it take to have 200 gallons? All right, so we have some different strategies on this one again. You could start making a table of values and or just using some logic and reasoning. And so if we did the table of values, let's see, after 7 minutes, she had 310. Let's see, eight minutes, so it would be 20 gallons less, so 290. At nine minutes, you'd be at 270 gallons. 10 minutes, 250. 11 minutes, 230. 12 minutes, 210. And at 13 minutes, you'd be down to 190. So it actually crosses 200 gallons between 12 and 13. It looks like exactly halfway between. So it looks like 12.5 minutes is how long it would take. All right, so that's one strategy that you could use there. Um, you could also start plugging in some numbers, but for now, we're gonna go with that strategy. Um, you could use an equation, uh, which is actually our next part, right? And we could solve the equation using our solving steps or by graphing. We use some logic there so far. All right, so write an equation that represents the relationship between gallons of water in the tank and the minutes it's been draining. So we started with 450. We are subtracting 20 gallons per minute, okay? So let's think about our variables here. So minutes is changing. Let's call that M. And then the other variable that's changing is the gallons of water that's left. Let's call that G. So 450 minus 20 M is equal to our gallons of water. Let's graph that and mark the points on the graph that represent the gallons after seven minutes and the time when the tank has 200 gallons. So we're kind of like thinking about the solutions here. All right, let's go back over here and let's type that in. So we had 450 minus 20 and instead of M, we're gonna use the variable X and that is gonna be equal to our total gallons left, which is y. And by the way, oftentimes these equations will have a y equals at the beginning instead of at the end, but I just wanted to sync it up kind of with what we had in our parts of C, and that is perfectly fine when you have Desmos, you can do that. With a TI graphing calculator, Texas Instruments, you, you wanna do the y equals first. All right, so notice I don't even see a line even showing up on my graph. That's because my window isn't quite right here. Now notice that I would like to get on my gallons, my Y is my gallons here, is up to 450. So I'm gonna pinch on my Y axis here until I get that to be 450 or somewhere up there. Oh, there's my line. Okay, looking pretty good. And then the minutes. Now in the minutes here, notice I'm going up it's not going to be a ton of minutes that this is going to take. Um, notice that at seven minutes, I had 310, and like 12 and a half minutes, I was down to 200. So maybe I'm going to pinch this a little bit so I can see that. Okay, so now I have a nice window to use. All right, so we're going to graph and find out, kind of mark the points on the graph that represent the gallons after seven minutes and write down the coordinates below. All right. So this time I'm gonna think, all right, like before, remember one thing I can do is kind of just drag a point and say, okay, at seven minutes, 
Okay, my x value is 7. All right, so I'm looking at my x is 7 and trying to figure out when do I get to exact. There it is, 310. And then it kind of disappears on me. So maybe what I want to do is at 7 minutes. So 7 minutes is my x value. So if I do an x equation, x equals 7, now I can see, okay, exactly where they cross, that original line, is what I have here. All right. Now, if you wanted to show this actual graph, remember, you can do the power button and home button to do a um, screenshot of this, and you can drag that into your, um, your notes. But for now, we're just going to keep it like this. So 7310 is going to be our coordinate. So 7, 310. All right, and then the other part was, and so notice what we just did is we solved this equation for when we had seven minutes, what the gallons were. We solved for the gallons. And the reverse of that is if we have 200 gallons, how many minutes did that take? So let me delete off that. So 200 gallons is our y-axis value. So gallons is on the y-axis. So if I'm doing a y-axis, I can just do y equals 200. And now notice I've got a line going straight across at 200. Again, I'm looking for that intersection right there. And notice, okay, I've confirmed 12 and a half is my amount of minutes that it's going to take. Very good. So 12 and a half, 200. will be our total. And so by the way, that solution up here works because if I have 450 minus 20 times 12.5, that's going to give me that 200 gallons that I had here. So that essentially is a way of finding the solution. How long will it take until the tank is empty? Okay, well, I have to think about this logically. How many gallons would I have left if the tank is empty? Well, it makes sense that I would have zero gallons left when my tank is empty because an empty tank has zero gallons. All right, so let's go over here and think, all right, what would I need to look at on my graph? Let me get rid of that. So zero gallons, my gallons is going down. So here, grab, click on my red line. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. And I go down, zero, zero, zero. There it is, 22 and a half, zero. Oh, but it disappears on me a little bit. So, well, or actually maybe it's still there. I guess it is there, 22 and a half, zero. So I can click on that. So there's your solution there. Otherwise, the other way to think about it is we could make that line again, and if our gallons are zero, the gallons is on the y-axis, I could just simply type equation y equals zero. Notice I get a line that overlaps the x-axis here and crosses right there at 22.5. So how long will it take? to get down to an empty tank, 22.5 minutes for zero gallons left. All right, so the coordinates on that was 22.50. So notice really what we're doing here is we're really solving the problem, but we're starting to think about the solutions more as a graph, as a point and knowing one piece and then tracking down the other piece. I know the X, let me find the Y. I know the Y, let me work backwards and find the X and using the graph to do it. So that's kind of a handy way of solving a problem. Even if we don't know all the algebraic steps, we can start to use the graph on Desmos. And once we know how to do that, that's a really actually a very fast way to solve algebraic equations.